Okay, um, I, I've taken you through some pretty um, basic steps for cartooning, and hopefully by the end of the session, we all have a cartoon of one form or other, uh, maybe several, uh, on a couple of subjects. And we brainstorm. What I generally find myself doing, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm getting in the mode of doing a bit of cartoonery, and, uh, and I did it extensively at some point, so I, I really got into it and enjoyed it. I still do. Uh, but you, you kind of flip to this slightly cynical mode of thinking, which is over the top. It's, it's like burlesque comedy, and, and you're always exaggerating, and you're teasing out kind of extremes and things. But politics and news is often so bizarre these days, you, you don't have to do too much to, to get it for. So it's kind of, um, it's a famous saying that David Niven wrote in the and many may have read his autobiography at the Moon's Balloon. And it always stuck with me, I, I read it years ago, and he said, you can't do comedy unless there's a circus going on in your head. And I thought, wow, that's a really, really good quote. He was like, somehow or other, you, you kind of relax sufficiently to, to start thinking or, or allowing your thoughts to roll away in a rather bizarre way when you, when you think about a certain kind of political subject or anything like that. And it does turn into a circus. I think politics is a bit of a circus. Um, so a lot of my stuff has been political, but it's not always political per se. It can be very personal, very personal. But I think politics comes into everything, and tell you define it. Um, so that's the first kind of thing, freeing up the thought processes, which we do in a, in a brainstorm. And we come up with that subjects. Uh, and then it's drawing, and it's free drawing. And the best way of developing a cartoon style is linking this spontaneity, really free style of kind of illustrating ideas and solidifying it with, with line. Um, so I'll explore that as well and show you how I approach that. It, it's, a, it's an incredibly useful way of developing your style. Um, I don't know how many of you do it, but doodling, I think, is fundamental. Yeah. Fundamental to all our Paul Key in his brain, his brain, his the water table. It's utterly, I, I think, it's, it's also like a truism. If, if, you, if you draw, you're, you're going to be doing art or something like that. Doodling. Doodling will take you to extraordinary lengths, I think. So, it's three things that circus idea in your head, uh, the, the free drawing, and also allowing the line to go where it goes. It will suggest stuff as you draw it. So you're thinking of something, you start drawing it, and that line will suggest something else. You're prompting forwards. Um, so with that in mind, um, <coughs> we take a subject, and it could be any subject. If anyone could throw out a theme for the day, uh, we'd explore it. So what would be something you might like to explore? Politics. Politics, we narrow it down to a subject. <laughs> I think. Covid so. inquiry. Covid inquiry. What can we say about that? How would we illustrate that? What's, what's, what's kind of bizarre to do? Boris and his texts. Boris and his texts. Yeah, and uh, I must confess, I, I, the last few weeks I've been a little bit remiss in the news, but from what I understand, Boris seems to be remarkably obliging in terms of what he's saying. Whereas there's a lot of hesitancy in the cabinet on this side. Right? Now well, that's going to tell us something, I think. So, Boris's text, Code of Inquiry, what, what might we be adding here? The Beatles meet John Lennon and Elvis Presley and the Rolling Stones in the back garden of Boris. Uh, Ideally. Yeah, yeah. A whole, Did you say? A whole circus of celebrities out in Boris's back garden. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Boris kind of getting involved. Maybe, I he, think... He's at the barbecue. He's at the barbecue. We have fun catching. Why is he so keen to be obliging? Guilt. Would it be? Or <laughs> someone else's guilt. Clearly. Yes, yeah, somebody else's guilt. <coughs> I have a feeling he doesn't mind <coughs> taking the issues through that. Yeah. Uh, I think he's thinking... Yeah, he's right. thinking about staying in politics. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, he didn't stay in their reputations. And make them seem about him. Self preservation. 
in self-preservation. And he can say, well, look at the playing field. They're all the same, but I'm the one the most charismatic. Let me, let me uh, give me an open door again, and I'll transform the politics. And uh, maybe he sees it as his way of leveling the field and giving himself a head start by implicating the others. So you, you've got that bizarre scenario where Boris is seeing being restrained from being over forward with disclosing his past through his texts and the cabinet office very restrained and trying to do the restraining of somebody who has been relatively unrestrained in politics. So this it is full of satire potential. Is is that is that the angle do you think that we can go? If if we think of illustrating that thing which um, we talked about, Boris of the key to um, offer his assistance to the inquiry, and the government really rather reticent. How might that be illustrated? So, what's the question? If, if um, Boris is really keen to be obliging to the inquiry, yeah. and yet the cabinet office apparently with, on the instruction of the government is seemingly wanting to restrain access to these texts. Yes. How do we illustrate that? What what's a way of doing it? Um, yeah. I've got a picture of Boris with his phone yeah. in his hand. Yeah. Um, sort of offering it. Yeah. Um, but in some way, the government don't want to take yeah. it. Yeah. Why not have Rishi Sunak yeah. kind of pulling Boris back? And there's like a, a finishing line, almost like a, we've got the excellent races at the moment. There's something going on with somebody running across the track and holding it up. So a horse race. Politics is a race, first past the post. You know, a sort of nice echo there. And as a bunch of horses on us. Um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe that's extending it too too far. But certainly I quite like this finishing post idea and Boris, with the COVID inquiry, you can have two people either side of the finishing line and you can have a little sign, COVID inquiry. So you want to draw a line under it, somebody through, through the finishing line. Boris is approaching and he's got his phone out and he's just about to cross the line it seems obliged the COVID inquiry, but he's been pulled back by Rishi Sunak, by others. We don't know if that's the truth, but that's politics. You're making a sort of scenario out of it. Mm -hmm. They can't go without it. They could be on horseback. Could be on and, horseback. Um, Rishi Sunak could have um, one of his you know, camp cars. And that's it, that's it. Ah. To get him and hold him back. That's it, yeah. Mm. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's a brilliant one. Trying to draw a horse, though. Yeah, fun, fun. Yeah. Cheers, Angela. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I think that's great. Um, uh, I'll do this, and I'll line it. I'll quickly line it, and then try your own versions of it or take another theme from politics. We, we've thrown up in the COVID inquiry, I think the horse, the series is brilliant. That's great, that pulls it right in. I think all as competing jockeys, um, like a derby, the COVID derby, a derby day, the COVID inquiry, whatever it is. But yeah, uh, Rishi is a, as a cowboy, kind of putting it back, and Boris is this eager leader jockey trying to get through, and trying to pass the, the, the phone through the line he's often doing. Um, okay, that seems a big subject, and it, and it is kind of big. So I'm going to try and draw this out, in this freestyle way, really fluidly, there'll be some errors. It's not going to be the most fluid of drawings, probably, um, because I'm going to do it at speed. And sometimes I, I, I will take an hour of a drawing because I want to get it just right and I'll cross up the answer it's not quite right. I'm going to take a few shortcuts. Um, so <coughs> the, I'll do it this way. I'll do it nice and big on A2. And I'll do it as in profile which is a good way of drawing the horses. I'll have the finishing line, I'll have Boris up front, and suddenly being pulled back by Rishi on the horseback. 
Hey, this is where smartphones are brilliant and instant access to the internet is what political card is. I'm sure we're doing all the time. It's like, you know, fizz shots of various politicians and profiles and so forth. I've sketched Boris quite a bit over the years and you can just still him down to something really basic. Just a mop of hair, a little nose, two little piggy eyes and a great <coughs> broad face. And he lends himself to it. Uh, Rishi Sunak? Yeah, to some extent, I probably wanted to glimpse his face to just get it. It's not quite as memorable as Boris and his mock uh, So, here we go. I'll start doing this. And I'll start with the leading horse. So, the fluid drawing I'm talking about is this kind of really quick... I don't know. And if I hold it up, it's just like a bunch of lines. Really quick, and that's the start of the horse's head. I think you can I may need to make it smaller, I don't know, but it's where the line is going to take me. Um, Covid inquiry here, I, I might make that horse a little bit smaller because I need to fit a bit more in. And um, so, Boris, I do him on the horse, but he's just about restrained and he has his um, maybe you hold, it, hold it up there. So can you put your pot of planes over there? Yeah. Yeah, sure. This is this will look like um, so much indecipherable squiggle, probably at this point. But I'm going to give it some line and form just to demonstrate. It's going to be restrained by Rishi, and I would. I might get away. He's got quite a long face, Rishi Sunak. Neatly parted hair. See if I can get an approximate sort of likeness. And he's, a, he's quite a small guy. And I give him a large head, as you tend to do in cartoonery. So I'm going to pull Boris back a bit here. This is all going to look really vague at this point. But it should clarify with the drawing. I need to push that horse slightly further ahead. But free drawing is this, where you've just got a bunch of lines, but you're doing it really fast. And the idea is covering and it's suggesting itself as you go. And, and that's why you're doing it on an A2? Uh, yeah, uh, well, no, I, I generally do it A3, but I'm doing it A2 just for uh, visual purposes. So it's a little bit bigger for everyone to see. Um, okay, take that horse down. Now, drawing a horse is a challenge. And I was lucky uh, because I, I started drawing horses when I was a kid. Because my, my father, who kind of really prompted me into becoming an artist of one form or another, was a self-taught artist himself and he was obsessed with horses. And all he did was draw horses and paint horses when I was a kid. And he'd sell them. And I, I used to watch him drawing these horses. And then I'd, I'd copy them. And um, you kind of get a, a format for horses which serves you. So I don't, don't ever mind drawing a horse. I'll take that down a little bit. Now I'm going to solidify this as well so you can see. Human beings have always had a thing for dogs and horses. Yeah. Zebras, giraffes, I don't get a look at it. It's always horses and dogs. Yeah, yeah. Horse, the, 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 the kangaroos and dogs, nothing. The domesticated, and, but particularly horses. Oh, is this the people at the finish line? Yeah, yep. finishing line. And we have up here, I just have a big sign. And maybe we'll have some spectators up here. Stands. Yeah, maybe the phone is coming out of his hand. Throw that up there, and we'd say, um, what could we call it? COVID, Derby Day, Derby Day, COVID inquiry, COVID, COVID Derby, COVID Derby, COVID Derby Day. Any any race races, Kempton, COVID. Kempton, Covid, thinking of alliteration, so that sounds a little bit kind of 
trips off the tongue a bit. Covid, Kempton, four-legged race, four-legged. Uh, give me a Just the race is on. Um, race, yeah. Um, <coughs> Derby day, race is on. Alfin is in the in. Well, the Stuart's inquiry or something. This one, sorry. Stuart's Stuart inquiry. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stuart. Um, um, we need a Stuart's inquiry. Can you do that as a speech bubble coming? Um, I don't know. Something that Boris could say. Even. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Covid. Covid. First past the post. Uh, Covid. With my with my with my champagne or something. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, what should I say? Um, Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm onto a winner with this phone. Or the, the, and the phone's coming out of his hand. But I'm sure. I wonder if that will work. The phone will win. Uh, um, I'm onto a. Um, you, you can't stop me. I'm onto a winner with this phone. Well, it's too long. You can't. Uh, you can't. You need speech marks if you have such a great Yeah. Record. Yeah, yeah. Don't ride me, I'll phone you. Don't ride me. Uh, don't, uh, don't, uh, no holding me back. Uh, this is a winner. Yeah, <laughs> or something. Hello. Yeah. Uh, uh, never mind, the phone's a winner. Yeah. yeah. And the phone is going this way. Maybe, and there's somebody at the line there ready to catch it. That's, that's good. That's kind of resolving it. Because it was all open-ended, but this is... And you'll see in a second. That's a nice way of resolving it. Because it, it's, it's like when you, when you get these... Um, when you set up these satirical ideas, you, you pose yourself a puzzle, and you want to sort of close it. And sometimes you sort of do it. Other times you never want to leave it go when it's just left hanging. But when you... Generally speaking, you do resolve it. And when you do, you've kind of made something satisfactory. So here, um, never mind. The, uh, never mind. The phone's a winner. Never mind me. The phone's a winner. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's holding Boris back. Yeah. 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 Never mind me. The phone's a winner. <coughs> so, in a way, it's. Um, <coughs> And uh, no, we need to take that down a bit. Now, I'll show you. No, me, the phone's a winner. It's nicely ambiguous. Not, uh, not ambiguous as such, it, it requires a little bit of interpretation. Um, or it, the other way around. Uh, never mind the phone, I'm the winner. Himself Never mind me, the phone's a winner. But by implication, he's, he's linked to that phone. Oh, yeah. So he's, he's, he's going to do it. So, this is the free drawing. And now I'm going to put a bit of paint on that. Now that's really vague. Yeah. Really vague. So I'll, I'll try to do the this. But once you get into this way of drawing and presenting stuff, you, you know your principal lines are. Um, so, I get a bit of brown paint. Yeah. Just the kind of way I drew was really light. Mm. Just holding it in my wrist really loose. Uh, something similar with the painting, and it's the elements of the line, really, which comes into play. I think the really good caricaturists just draw, and they draw really well. And you, you see the quality of their line, their the, the character comes through in the line. So, um, now I'll come and I'll start on maybe Boris.
Taurus. Yeah, yeah. And you get a real horror of whether it's Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, at the time of the uh, at Christmas time, um, I always kind of do a couple of satirical Christmas cards, and it was just dominated by Ukraine. Um, and all I could think of doing was stuff like um, Santa in a bombed out house delivering missiles, you know, mm -hmm. you know stuff like that. Yes, it's a bit dark, but. Quite a detailed cartoon, you know, this really brilliant cartoonist like Matt from The Telegraph and others, absolutely spared for single line stuff, a lot of stuff in private eye, superb, brilliant cartoons, single line stuff. But this is a little more, it'll be a little more kind of art saturated because of the colour and the form and the obvious pleasure, you know, you're kind of getting in painting and drawing it. So all the elements are in there. And that's quite reasonable, it's well balanced. Uh, yeah, the horse looks okay. I was wondering about it when I was doing it. I think it gives a sense of momentum and rush. Um, that horse driving forward, Boris there, um, the two little stewards or guys at the finishing post, uh, COVID inquiry, finishing line. Uh, It's almost like a classic comic strip. You've got three panels. The setup, everybody busy, I'll buy that, I'll buy that, oh, I'll have that. They're absolutely quiet corridors when, you know, it's exhibiting and you're sitting around drumming your fingers on the tables yeah. and, yeah. and then at the end on the floor, oh, I'll have that, I'll, yeah. I'll have that. Um, three panel idea is a workable one where you'd have the central panel where the exhibition nothing happens to it very little and you've got all the bit, all the happening around it and it's um, again caption will often set something like that off. So before, during and after. If it's exaggerated slightly, yeah. um, so that when people are taking and kind of putting pictures over the water, uh, that's mine, I'll buy that, and, yeah. um, um, and somebody 
holding a picture and somebody else saying, no, I want that now or something. But that didn't happen. That didn't happen. It, it, it didn't happen. That did not happen. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it's sort of pushing it, it to sort yeah. of convey the idea that... Convey the idea that I'm trying to put this on the wall, yeah. but that person wants to buy it yeah. before it goes up. It's, it's been bought okay. before. Change the position here again. It's this scribbly, loose line way of drawing. Looks like three sets of arms there, but they would just be ridiculous. And you can have slightly ghostly, slightly ghostly, slightly ghostly, and then a more solid image. You know, you, know, you, you kind of present it like that hands of the emotion. Yeah, that, yeah, that's kind of. and then after. Kind of clear. Um, I would adjust a few little things on that. For instance, I'd, I'd reduce the size of this lettering slightly, push this across a little bit more, and purely because 
That's slightly bigger than that writing down there. So I want it, um, and it's easily done because you just paint white over it and you correct it. You know, it's what you do with acrylics. Acrylics are just so kind of mild. Um, tend to just to rub off the bits underneath, but it's not essential that I do. Sometimes you do find, if you don't rub off, uh, you have to work up the paint a little bit more to conceal pencil lines. But um, you can just paint directly over it. Sometimes those pencil lines make it worth more money. Don't they? Uh, well, yeah, the pencil lines can be a feature of it. Yeah. Um, it depends on the kind of effect you want to get. Um, but I'll take them off. Those are quite bright. Um, 
I'm going to use 30 muted tones for the background. So if I just illustrate this a bit, if you know, but I'll finish this um, over this next week. Colour you're not happy with, but it's too to dry, you just paint over it.